Hello and welcome to log monitoring lesson. Another and most important way of system administration is log monitors. Think of a log monitor in a way as if you have um, if you have your personal physician or a doctor. Every time you go to him, he or she has a chart on you which the record of your medical history which tells the doctor what are the problems you had in the past, whether you had any surgery, whether you're allergic to any medicine. So that is the way doctors keep logs on your physical health. Just like that, systems also have to keep logs and generate logs and record everything that goes on with the system. So in our log directory, right here in our Linux system, the primary log directory is var and slash log. All the logs that are generated in Linux machines are mainly in var log directory, unless specified or changed in the configuration file on a, of an application to change the log location. Um, few of the logs that we will cover in this lesson are one, number one is boot. Boot is the log when your system boots up or reboots. It generates this log and records everything that goes on to your system. How it cleans up the memory, what are the processes starting up, if it, has, if, it, if it is having any issues, it will log everything in there. Then you have crony D, which is a newer version of NTP. It has its own log. Cron, mail log, secure logs. The next one, we have the messages log. Messages is one of the important logs that every system administrator uses to monitor system activities. Everything that is a, a hardware-wise, application-wise, or process-wise, anything that has to do with the systems or even application-wise, it goes into war log messages. Then at the la last one, we have HTTPD, which is also an Apache application log. So without further ado, I will log into my Linux machine. Then I log in as myself. I already have an IP that I have specified. Um, so once I log in, I will go into war slash log directory. When I am in slash log directory, I could run ls minus l command or simply run ll and view all the logs. And once again, when I run that, it has so many logs, so many files, so many directories that I cannot view them all in one page. So I will do is ll pipe it to more. And you will see LL uh, will list all the files by alphabetical orders. Um, so the first one is audit. Audit is one of the files or directory that has all the audit information. Then we have boot.log. Let's look at boot.log. When you do more on boot.log, I get a message says permission denied. Why do I get that message? because the boot.log is owned by root and the group who owns that file is also root. So am I root? Who am I? I'm not root. Okay, so if I'm not root, do I have the permission to read the file? And as others, I should have read permission right here, right? Last three bits. Or if I'm part of the group, I should be, I should have access here. So neither group nor regular ordinary users has access to read a file so only root has it so we will become root go back to our log and we'll do boot.log when i hit enter you'll see on the left side it is coming up with okay messages while system is booting up Every time there is an issue with the system booting up, it will come up with a message saying false or error or alert. So you'll see it is starting all the services one by one. It is starting all the processes. Welcome to CentOS Linux 7. It's going through each step of this boot startup. And when it starts up completely, it stops the log. When you reboot your system this file which is 
sorry, ls minus l boot dot log, this file gets overwritten. So if I reboot my machine right now, it will generate a newer file and it will rewrite this boot.log. Okay, so next one we have is crony. Crony is a replacement of NTP service. Um, any type of changes that we make on the crony service, it actually generates the log and, and it actually logs that information into the logs. Next one we have in the list is cron. If you look at it on the left hand side, I'm just going by what I have listed. There are many other files and if you have time and if you are interested in learning all these different logs, then please be my guest. Try out every command. Oh, sorry. Try out every file and see what they are used for. Um, the next one I wanted to cover is the cron, which is right here. You, whenever you schedule a job or a process through a cron tab entry, it generates some kind of it activity and that activity or that record is logged into this file so you could do cron and you will see all the information about the cron and by the way whenever you open up a log file the first is the month second is the date time the name of your host name the daemon which is cron d and the process id associated with that daemon the user who's running that and the command or the entry that has been associated with that cron. Moving on, um, we have the next one. We have quickly, um, there is a command called dmessage. When you run this command, this one also gives you information about the hardware. If you do not want to run this command, you could simply do cat on dmessages as well, which will give you the exact same information. The next one we have is uh, mail log mail log has all the information about your send mail daemon which means every time you send an email out or every time an email comes in all that activity is being recorded in this log um, whenever you are troubleshooting issues with send mail service this is one of the logs you would have to look into to see why you are why your server is not able to send emails Moving on, then we have secure log right here. Now, secure logs is the log that actually um, records all your logging in, logging out activity. So when you do more on secure, you'll see all the users that have been logged in, if they have failed logging in, or if they, uh, from which machine they are logging in, all the information about the users. So I am, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do tail minus F. Now minus F is the option that will keep on sniffing the log and every time a new record is updated to the log, that tail minus F will get that newest log at the bottom. So if I do tail minus F um, secure and I'll keep running this command, this command is running. Now I'm gonna open up another session Another putty session I have already saved. And if I log in as myself and I type in wrong password, let's say, as soon as I type wrong password, you see in the background, it says right here, fail the password for I absolve. And I'm trying to log in from this machine, 192.161.8. If I log back in with the correct password, then I will get that additional re record for my session saying session open for user I have solved so this is about the secure the secure log file and the next one is one of the most important log file that you should spend your time in is messages every time there's an issue with your machine the first thing an administrator does they log into your machine and they will trace the logs in messages file. So you go into CDWAR log and then you do more on messages. 
Now this file has, again, once again, this file has all the hardware information, all the software information, all the application information, all the processes information. Everything is being logged into this log. So if I wanted to see how many uh, lines this log file has, I could do cat messages and do WC minus L. So let's see, I have 7,103 lines. If I wanted to see if there are any error messages in this file, so I'll do grep minus I. I is to ignore um, uppercase, lowercase from messages file. And you will see it actually grepped every line inside of this log file that has a message called error. So this way you could go in and see what's going on with your system, what happened, why it failed, what time it failed. So anyway, um, let's wrap up the lesson and again, spend some time in this war log messages. Um, go over all these um, log files, specifically the ones I have in this lesson, and see what type of different logs there are. View them, grub for certain errors, and get yourself familiar with them.